Were you given 24 hours to decide if you should put your beloved animal down? Today, let me show you how animal communication can give you an immediate answer to find out if your animal is ready to go. In today's podcast, I will talk about death, dying, and the dreaded end-of-life decision for your animals. I hope this podcast will give you a deeper understanding of the value of animal communication and energy healing when making the incredibly tough and end-of-life decision to euthanize. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a certified professional animal communicator and pranic healer, and I offer remote and in-person animal communication, energy healing, and training workshops and mentoring. I work with all kinds of animal issues, including behavioral, physical, and health, dying, and end of life, animals already passed, past lives, and much more. I am available on an emergency basis to help decide if your animal is ready to cross over. So how can animal communication help with death, dying, and end-of-life decisions? First, I can help alleviate that horrible guilt that you may have made the wrong decision. Instead, I allow your animal to decide this very important life and death decision so you will know with 100% certainty. I can get immediate answers for you since a vet typically gives you 24 hours to make the decision to euthanize your pet or not. As I mentioned, I offer emergency sessions so I can directly ask your animal if they're ready to leave their body. If your animal is not ready to leave, I can find out what they need and if they are open to do a healing session. I can also address animal mirroring. For more information on mirroring, listen to the podcast episode number five on animal mirroring. If they are ready to go, I can find out all the details of how they would like to pass and find out if they are coming back to you. In my experience as an animal communicator, sometimes the animal can look like they are falling apart. In your mind, you see the animal with limbs out of place, fur coming out, and many other physical symptoms. But if I ask them if they are ready to go, they will sometimes surprise you and say, no, I'm not ready to leave my body. I am not done with my lessons with my person. Some animals have gone through a long chronic disease process, and you feel they are nearing the end of their journey. Other times, there may have been some emergency, such as an accident or acute illness. Regardless of their issue, many veterinarians will only give you a very short time to make a life and death decision. Let's take a look at the scenario that you were only given 24 hours to decide if your beloved pet gets euthanized. I'll ask, are you ready to leave your body? Let's take a look at both scenarios. Let's say your animal is not ready to go. Your animal, as I said, may look like they are falling apart, but physically may not be ready to go at all. They may have different reasons, but most of the time, they will share with me it is because they are not finished with their lessons they are working on with their humans yet. Our animals are our sole family, as any animal caretaker or pet caretaker knows, just like our human family. We all reincarnate into soul families over and over again to help each other with our lessons. If you listen to our last podcast, episode number five, about animal mirroring, you would know your animal may, may be mirroring a disease for you so that you are made aware of something and get treatment and help for yourself. So if you euthanize an animal who is mirroring you, you have lost a grand opportunity to find out your own state of health and well-being and lost a beloved friend who could have released a disease or health issue 
after you have worked on yourself and had many more happy years with you being your animal. I realize not everybody understands these things when having an animal, but it's much more complicated than we ever knew. As I said, sometimes your animals may feel their work with you is not done. Even if it isn't a mirroring issue, sometimes there is simply more work to be done and the animals know better and should be a part of this huge life and death decision. If they are not ready to go, please honor this. I have had clients that their animal clearly stated to me they are not ready to go, but the client went ahead and euthanized their animal anyway. Please, please honor your animal's decision. They are not disconnected from their soul like humans are. They know their soul purpose, why they are here, and the lessons they are working on with your human family. They also know when their time is up and when they are done working with their humans. We will talk more about this in the next two episodes, seven and eight. As I mentioned earlier, if they are not ready to leave, I can find out if they are open to receiving help with their physical or health issue so they can get better. This might include going to the vet for more treatment options or being open to receive an energy healing from me. I can do energy healing remotely from the comfort of your home. I can also ask your animal when they will be ready to leave their body. They may say in months or even years. Don't be surprised. Some animals have lived way past their typical lifespan. And as I mentioned, it has nothing to do with the way they look, falling apart and, and everything. It has nothing at all to do with that. I can also ask what will be the signs for their person when they are ready. Now let's take the scenario that your animal says they are ready to go. If they are ready, I can ask many important questions about how your animals would like to end their time with you. I can find out how they would like to go. Would they like to pass naturally at home, surrounded by family? Or would they like to be euthanized quickly using twilight sleep at the vet's office? I can find out who they would like to have present in their last moments, who they would like to be held by, and how they would like to be memorialized and what they would like done with their remains. If they want to be cremated or put in an urn on a mantle or have their ashes spread in a special spot, they may want their ashes spread over an area that they really enjoyed in life, like a favorite mountain hike or their favorite beach they used to run on. If they choose to be buried, they may ask to be buried in a garden setting in the backyard of the home. I've had animals even ask to be buried around flowers because they love the scent of flowers. I can even ask how they would like to be acknowledged and remembered. This is really important and a beautiful question that you can look back at. You may even print and frame what they say in their final moments and keep us on display with their picture and a few personal items. I can chat with them about what their relationships were like with their persons and what they most enjoyed being whatever animal they were that they chose in this incarnation. But most importantly, I can ask them if they have anything they wish to share with you before they go. This alone will give you great peace and something beautiful to remember when you're feeling sad. I can also find out if they are coming back to you. I'll ask, are they coming back to you? When will they come back to you? As what animal or being? More on this in the next two episodes, but... Uh, I have had m multiple cases of animals that were human before and gave me historical details and facts that could be accurately pulled up on Google and verified. Um, some animal communicators do not believe this, but I have had personal experience. 
So I always ask, what animal or being have they chosen? How will you recognize them? What will be the signs that you are ready to come back? As I said, we will address this more in detail in the next two podcast episodes, seven and eight. So please subscribe for notifications. Now, let me share a personal story with you about my beloved dog, Frosty. When I adopted my dog, Frosty, at age six, he was already very untrained and untrainable. Age six is pretty old for a dog. I got him at age six. He was extremely aggressive, untrained, defensive, would growl, show teeth, soil in the house, run away and bite, and he even ran down a train track one time. Uh, He was very, very, very unruly. But with time, we developed such a deep loving bond that after his passing, An animal communicator told me Frosty wanted to communicate something to me. This is what he communicated. Frosty had multiple past lives as a controlling, very unkind, aggressive ruler. He shared how much all of my love for him changed him and transcended his soul karma. Because of how much love I brought to him, he was able to transcend anger and move past negative emotions. But despite this, I grieved for the next 13 years until I became an animal communicator and began doing past life regressions. During a regression, it came out that Frosty has incarnated with me over and over and over again to help me with my lessons as three different animals in this lifetime and many others in other lifetimes. When I found this out, I felt such a strong connection to Frosty as my sole animal that I never, ever cried again. But I did not go to an animal communicator before putting him down because I didn't know you could do this. If I had gone to an animal communicator, things would have been a lot easier for me and maybe I wouldn't have cried for 13 years. But he did show me that it was ready for him for time to pass, for him to pass. I selfishly was holding on to him because I'd also lost my mother. So I know without a doubt that he was showing me it was time for him to go. But if I had known an animal communicator could have asked all of these questions and more, I would have had a much, much easier time without the 13 years of horrible grief. Here are some suggestions to make your animal's final days comfortable. Number one, for an animal who stopped eating and possibly drinking, the first priority is to keep them hydrated. Ask a vet about an electrolyte formula or try small amounts of coconut water, one cup at a time, not too much, because coconut water can cause diarrhea, especially in large quantities. So just do a small amount. So you want to keep them hydrated. They're probably not eating or drinking very well. Um, But definitely discuss the electrolytes with the vet. Number two, discuss with the vet an appetite stimulant or possible CBD oil um, to improve pain and appetite. Uh, Also have the vet check hydration status. It can quickly become a problem. They might require IV fluids if they are not drinking or getting any liquid from food. Number three, if your animal is still consuming small amounts of food and water, bring the food and water bowls to their bedside so they won't have to get up. If your animal is used to sleeping upstairs, you may want to relocate them to a quiet downstairs room so they won't have to, number one, climb the stairs, and um, you won't have to climb the stairs to take care of them either. And also, so they, ha- they can have quick access to the front door, even if there's no doggy door, you can have quick access to get them out of the house if they need to go. The next one is check with your vet about good supplements to reduce joint inflammation. Many animals are suffering from joint inflammation, arthritic pain, 
um, or just being an elder animal. And there's possible, um, you could possibly grind up glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin, and MSN into wet foods and see how they tolerate it. So check with your vet about all of those anti-inflammatory things for the joints uh, and if your animal has pain or inflammation. Number six is no-touch energy healing to reduce joint inflammation, lessen pain, and make them feel more comfortable. I offer remote, no-touch pranic healing for animals and their humans and can work on the physical and energetic bodies, including the chakras and chakra balancing. The next thing is you want to look for a possible certified neurological chiropractor specialist for animals. There is something called the Healing Oasis Wellness Center who has practitioners in different states. Make sure they are VS. MT graduates and AVCA certified. So look for those listings for the state where you live in. Number eight is to check with your vet about using essential oils for pain. Beware because many animals, including and especially cats, are too sensitive to use oils and it can harm them. So you do not want to use essential oils around some animals, especially cats. So you need to check with the vets and find out the list of yeses and nos for essential oils and which ones are acceptable for your specific animal. If you find out the oils are allowed, use soothing essential oils for pain and inflammation. Young Living has a combination pain reliever called Panaway, And also something called Copaba is also helpful. You can dilute this with four drops of essential oils with a carrier oil, which is edible, like coconut oil or olive oil, and rub on topically. So you're not going to give it internally. You're going to rub it on topically. But again, make sure you check with the vet to find out if essential oils are allowed for your species of animals. And if they are not, please do not use them anywhere near the animal. And last, be sensitive to your animal's pain when they have to go from a resting position to moving and walking. If they enjoy car rides, try using a ramp to get them in or out of the car. Now let's discuss how to prepare for your animal's passing. Number one, you're going to honor your animal by preparing yourself for their transition. Read about the eternity of life and death and how death is not the end, but a transition back to spirit. And again, I'll be talking about this in depth in the next two episodes, number seven and eight. So please join me for those episodes. Number two, to communicate to your animal that you support him or her and whatever they choose. Whatever their decision is, that you're going to fully support that because, again, it's honoring your animal and their decision. Number three, if you take your animal into the vet's office and they suggest you put them down, please, please, please check in with yourself. If it does not feel right, then please trust that little voice within you. Get quiet and ask your animal or an animal communicator such as myself before you rush into this decision, which you're unsure of. Trust yourself and trust your animal. Even if you can't hear your animal, you can get a sense of what's right. It's really hard when you're in that grieving terror process that you go through right before their passing. So that's why I said it's invaluable, and I wish I would have known this back then with Frosty, but it's invaluable what animal communicators such as myself do to provide a service to talk to your animal so you can know with 100% certainty that this is the right decision. Number four, have a family discussion to discuss possible options. 
Number five, be prepared so when the time comes, you are not stressed and the process is very peaceful and loving. Send your animals thoughts and images of a beautiful, peaceful passing of what you want, not what you don't want. So you want to imagine what the peace and the easy transition that they are to go through. You want to imagine that. Imagine them crossing a rainbow bridge and playing with lots and lots of other animals, running up and down beaches and hillsides. That's what you want to imagine. You want to imagine peace for them. Number six, if you decide to euthanize instead, find a vet or an in-home service who will discuss euthanasia or twilight sleep. Process fully so there are no surprises. Will the family be allowed to be present? Are you allowed to stay with the animal until they are ready to leave? If they come to your home, will a vet have an assistant? So make sure you get all these questions answered so you can be at ease when the time does come. Number seven, spend quiet time with your animal. Share with them. You can talk to them silently or out loud. They can hear your thoughts, so either way is okay. They understand your thoughts. They can actually hear your thoughts and your verbalizations. You want to thank your animal for being in your life and perhaps many other lifetimes if you are aware of these to help you with your lessons. Tell them the gifts that they have given you and how they've helped you throughout your lifetime. Share your feelings of sadness about them leaving, but tell them that you love them enough to let them go. Tell your animal everything you wanted to share with them so you can feel complete with the relationship. Don't leave anything unsaid, but if only I had told him this. Tell them you will always remember them and acknowledge them for what they brought in your life and whatever they shared with you in the animal communication session with me. Remind them how them coming into your life has changed you and made you a better human. They will be very happy to hear this, that they have done a magnificent job being of service to you. And lastly, if you wish, and if it is appropriate for your lifestyle, tell them you would love for them to come back to you and be sure to send you signs when they are ready. Now that they are gone, how do you handle the grief? Take it from me. Doing an animal communication session can really, really help the whole dying process and make it a lot easier for both parties. Just by listening to this podcast, you are being made aware of steps that can be taken to assist in the passing of your beloved animal and to greatly assist you into letting go of your best friend. By respecting and honoring your animal's decision on whether it is time to cross the rainbow bridge, you will be strengthening the soul bond you and your animals share. After putting your animal down, you can assist the transition by chanting Om Mani Padmaye Hum. This is a Buddhist tradition to help the soul transition or whatever faith or religious death rites you are familiar with to help with the passage. You can also hold a beautiful memorial or celebration of life ceremony with friends and family, and share whatever your animal wished to share in your animal communication session. Celebrate your animal's passing and life together with love. Book an animal communication session after they have passed. I can talk to animals in spirit also after they have crossed over. But as I mentioned earlier, please give them a little bit of rest period so your animal's soul can transition at first. For more detail on this, please listen to the next episode, number seven, on talking to animals in spirit. 
Here are two beautiful testimonials from clients that I got to share and take part in their experience of the end-of-life communication of their beloved animals. Testimonial one is a dog named Rumples who had a large grapefruit-sized tumor. He said he was ready to go soon, but not quite yet. The client said Rumples was not ready to leave his body yet. It was interesting to find out how many past lives I've shared with this soul. The session brought us closer than ever. S.G. Lutz, Florida. The second testimonial is from a great Dane named Logan. Logan was an elder dog nearing the end of his lifespan. He was amazing to talk to. The client said, You're an enlightenment and the animals really need you. Your compassion and patience in letting us share our pain. You made this a lot easier for us and gave us great peace. Not only do you feel it, but you expressed it to reach us on a soul level. It was such a blessing and comfort that you didn't rush us through the process and gave us a sense of security. You made the difficult part easier. It's a wonderful feeling and sense of peace in our heart, like we connected deeper with Logan than in the last 11 years. I was always a non-believer, and when you hit the nail on the head with Logan, with the things that only we knew about, and were very thorough. C and J, Newcastle, Washington. Although this has not been the easiest subject to address, it is part of reality that we all, as animal caretakers, must face at one time or another. I hope to impart one last thing to you. The knowledge and understanding that death is never the end. Although we are raised to fear death and its finality, this is simply not true. What we call death is merely a transition from one plane or dimension to another one. The soul is eternal and does not die, but merely transitions out of the physical vessel or body of the animal into the natural state of spirit. Spirit is much closer than you think. It is actually easier to communicate with an animal in the spirit realm than in the density of a physical body. We will be talking about this in more detail in the next two episodes, number seven and eight. That brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you have a much greater understanding of the value of hiring an animal communicator to assist you in your animal's end-of-life decision. Book your session now. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain with the beautiful and lasting words from your beloved animal and may even prolong or save a life of your animal who is not yet ready. Whatever your animal decides, it will open your mind, heart, and spirit to your deep connection with your animal. I am available for animal communication or energy healing sessions. Also, I have upcoming animal communicator training workshops. For more information, please visit my website at animals-speak.com. Or you can email me at lowly jane animal communication at gmail.com. Lowly is L O L I and then Jane J A N E Animal Communication at gmail.com. All one word. Be sure to follow and subscribe for special segments only available to subscribers. If you'd like to support my podcast channel, it would be greatly appreciated and allow me to continue bringing amazing content to you. Please click the donate button for support. Join us next week for episode seven, talking to animals in spirit that have already passed on. As always, love and gratitude for listening to the Lowly Jane Animal Communication and Healing Podcast. This podcast was created, produced, recorded, researched, and edited by Lowly Jane and it's a product of Lowly Jane Animal Communication and Healing.